Today I'll preach gospel with the subject salvation from sin and judgment. I shall speak this subject with six points. First, God's determination. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 says, It is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. The Bible tells two things here. The Bible speaks imperfect about humans and does not give detailed explanations. In God's existence and in creation, He merely proclaims those facts. Everyone dies. This is the first divine decree. Second, after death, man is to judge before God. That judge is amazingly the Lord Jesus Christ, God, whom people crucified. God has entrusted all his judgmental authority to his Son, Jesus Christ. Gospel of John, chapter 5, 26, 27 says, 26, For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. 27, And he has given him authority to judge, because he is the Son of Man. Second point, Sin and Judgment. The Bible defines all people as sinners, and the sins committed are not only sanctioned by the laws of the world. When a person commits a sin, the document of sin is placed first before God. This is called guilty. However, there is a guilty verdict, not mere sin or a crime. It is the same principle that when a person violates the law and commits a crime in the world, if he is prosecuted, he will go through a trial process, and if his, his guilt is confirmed, he will be punished. God promulgated the law through Moses, the servant of God, on Mount Sinai. 3,500 years ago. Today, all mankind should know this. When a person commits a sin, it is not the end if there are no problems with the laws of the world. It is a problem before God. Even if you didn't know God's law, it doesn't matter. So are the laws of the world. Once the law is promulgated, peoples are sanctioned by that law. Of course, God's law is not the only law given on the Mount Sinai. All the New Testament commandments are laws too. For example, the law of Mount Sinai said not to commit adultery, but in the New Testament, the Lord Jesus said, If you lust after a woman, you have already committed adultery in your heart. The Old Testament law was not guilty unless you murder. But it was strengthened in the New Testament. Jesus said that it would be a grave sin to be angry with your brother or to despise him as a fool. When man fell, of course in the Garden of Eden, God awakened the organ of conscience in human beings to condemn themselves. Before the fall, man had, to, man had no need for the function of conscience because he was sinless. But when man fell, God awakened man's conscience. When he committed a sin, then immediately condemned himself and made him realize that he is a sinner. 
So you should know that the people in this world are already condemned. This is John 3.18 also. Romans chapter 8 from verse 1 to 3 says that we humans have already been condemned when Christ was judged on the cross in his flesh. So we humans should know that we are already condemned as sinners and judged in Christ's death. Let's read John chapter 3, 18. He who believes in him will not be judged. He who does not believe he has already judged because he does not believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Therefore, in the Bible, when a person commits a sin, he will stand before God's judgment seat after death and will be judged by God's law based on his standard. The Jews will be judged by the law of God and the Gentiles will be judged according to the law written on their conscience. This is what Romans chapter 2 says. Verse 5 But because of your stubbornness, and your unrepentant heart. You are stirring up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath, when His righteous judgment will be re revealed. Verse 12, All who sin apart from the law will also perish apart from the law, and all who sin under the law will be judged by the law. Verse 14, Indeed, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature things required by the law, they are law for themselves, even though they do not have the law. Verse 15. They show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, their consciences also bearing witnesses, witness, and their thought sometimes accusing them and at other times even defending them. The Bible announces the existence of God who is the judge. This is an undeniable fact that cannot change whether people admit it or not. It is just like a blind man claims that there is a sun or there is no sun. It is the same as the fact that there is God. It is also true that all men are condemned guilty convicts. This is what the Bible says. The next point is that all people will die. And then the fourth is that the truth after death, after death is revealed, which is the dead will receive judgment before God's white throne. At the judgment seat, he will not be confirmed as a sinner at the first time, but at the time he will go to the lake of fire after checking the list of crimes by the book opened in front of the judgment seat of God. The Bible only says that God exists, but does not explain how God exists in detailed way. Judgment does not explain how it will be happened in the Bible, but only says that there will be a judgment of eternal destruction for all mankind in the future. Third point. Result of judgment. In the future, God will judge the sins of the whole world and He will give eternal punishment to those who do not know God and who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus, which is to go down into the eternal lake of fire. The Bible says that the people who do not know God cannot escape with the excuse of not knowing God. Those who do not know the gospel and do not believe and obey cannot avoid God's judgment and the eternal punishment. 
Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 8 And he will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Verse 9 These will be punished with everlasting destruction from the face of the Lord and the glory of his strength. Fourth point, future judgment is severe. The Lord Jesus came into this world and told people many things about future judgment. The joys of the world will pass, you too, and the whole world will end. But judgment will not pass, and one day it will come upon you. The Lord Jesus said, of course, there would be judgment. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 21. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. 22. But I tell you, it will be more bearable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. Verse 23 And you, Capernaum, will you be lifted to the heavens? No. You will go down to Hades. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it, have, it would have remained to this day. Verse 24 But I tell you that it will be more bearable for Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. This is because the Lord Jesus himself came. Now the world has spread to the end of the earth. You can't make excuses for not listening. Bible said that it had already spread throughout the earth in post time. Romans chapter 10 verse 18 says this, But I say, have they not heard? No, it is not that their voice has spread throughout the earth and their word has reached the end of the earth. Fifth point. Christ set up witnesses so that people could not use them as an excuse at the time of judgment. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 41. The men of Nineveh will rise at the judgment and condemn this generation because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. But one greater than Jonah is here. Nineveh was a great and famous city of antiquity. It was capital of Assyria. All the people in the city were sinners, so God sent a prophet named Jonah. God had compassion on the people of the city, but as we know, Jonah went to Tarshish, and after coming out of Wales' belly, went to Nineveh and prophesied that Nineveh would be destroyed in 40 days if they do not repent. At the time, when the people of Nineveh heard Jonah's preaching, they proclaimed a fast, and everyone from the king to the least wore sackcloth, repented and asked God earnestly. God saw their repentance and uh, postponed their destruction. At the time of their judgment, the people of Nineveh will be presented as witnesses 
so that they do not make excuses for not hearing, for not hearing the words of evangelism like Jonah. On the day of judgment, the people of Nineveh will speak. We repented after hearing Jonah's preaching. But since you have heard the gospel of the Son of God and have not repented, how can you escape judgment? God also appointed the Queen of the South as a witness so that some people could not say that they could not go to hear the gospel because they lived, they live too far away. She had traveled thousand miles to hear Solomon's wise words. Matthew chapter 12 verse 42 At the time of judgment, the queen of the south will rise and condemn this generation. For she came from the end of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. But one greater than Solomon is here. God sent a son who was greater than Jonah and wiser than Solomon. Even now, he is speaking through many evangelists. No one can excuse the fact that they have never heard the gospel words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Last point. How can future judgment be avoided. If a person is guilty, he has no way of avoiding judgment. How then can he be freed from sin? Without sin, there is no judgment. But where is the way to get rid of sin? There is only one way. The Bible only says this. We need a Savior because we are sure that we are sinners, and that our future judgment is certain, because there is no way we can save ourselves. When the problem of sin is solved, the problem of judgment is also automatically solved. No sin, no judgment. There is a sin, there must be a judgment. If you have sin, you can never avoid future judgment. God sent His Son into this world to solve the problem of human sin and salvation. If we have a sin, you must know sinful people deserve to be judged and go to lake of fire, hell. But the Bible tells us that Jesus, the Son of God, died for our sins. This is the gospel. In other words, good news. As I said last week, the Son of God came and took up the cross, took away our sins, and bore the punishment instead of us. Galatians chapter 2 and 20 says that Christ died for me. He said, Paul said, actually, he loved me and gave himself up for me. So I was saved and set free. I speak strongly about sin and death. Then after that, you will have the judgment. So, I say to you, you need a savior. Let me give you an uh, illustration or two of Vicarious Death of Christ The Story of American Civil War Two brothers living in the northern and southern part of the country separately were recruited to the army and served in the military. On, on, on one occasion, many southern soldiers were defeated and taken captive by northern soldiers. A soldier guarding the prisoners of war was the older brother of a certain southern captive. 
The old brother knew that one of the captives was his younger brother. And he did not speak during the day, but at night he took off his clothes and gave them to his younger brother to run away. Because the next day all the prisoners had to be shot. The older brother wore his younger brother's clothes and became a captive in the name of his younger brother. The next morning, the older brother was shot. After that, people knew that the deceased was not the prisoner himself, but the older brother had already died for his younger brother. And in principle, one man could not die twice. So they just let the prisoner, the younger brother, lose. This is just a small example of Jesus Christ's death on our behalf. The Bible tells us that Jesus, the Son of God, came to be judged in our place. The Bible says that Jesus died for us. But Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 also says, He loved me and gave himself up for me. Christ died for the church, but he also died for me personally. God came down from heaven and died for me so that I might go to heaven to meet our Heavenly Father. I'll speak another story as an illustration. Many immigrants from Britain and France in the early days of the United States lived mainly in the eastern United States. After that, a man went to Western, <coughs> a man went to Western San Francisco to dig gold. <coughs> and people came to hear that he had been mining gold and had a windfall. There was a couple who sold their properties and saved up money so that only her husband went west to get gold. After that, after a year, one year had passed. There is no news from his, from her husband. And one day, a telegram arrived, urgently asking his wife and family to come to San Francisco immediately. That is, I got the gold, so come quickly. Her wife was overwhelmed with joy, so she couldn't help but took her son and boarded the ship to San Francisco. At the time, she had very inconvenient transportation, so she took many days to get there by ship. One day, suddenly a noise was heard on the ship, and the wife locked the door wondering if the ship had met pirate and was afraid to go outside. But later, there is a smell of smoke and uh, when she opened the door to see if there is a fire and she found out the ship was on fire. When she came out on deck with her young son in a hurry, most of the people were already escaping in lifeboat. The last boat was already full of people. She came out too late. When she pleaded earnestly to the sailor of the ship, sailor ans answered, only one person can write. Then a very difficult problem arose. It was a desperate moment. One of the two should die. There's no way for both of them to live together. So, finally, her mother decided to pick up her son. If one person does not die, the other cannot live. 
Then her mother asked her to the sailor to write her husband's address and send her child to a father in San Francisco. The contents of the letter are as follows. My son, when you see your father, tell your father that your mother died in fire and in order for you so that you may see your father's face. It is just an example. The Lord Jesus may say like this, Sinner, I died on the cross for you so that you may see the face of the Father in heaven. Believe in God with your sincere heart, because I died for you so that you may live and go to heaven and see your heavenly Father. These words were spoken by the Lord Jesus himself. I will read the verse. This is John chapter 5 verse 24. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever heard, hears, whoever hears my word and believes in him who has sent me has eternal life and does not come into judgment, but has crossed over from death to life. Today, I will tell you one thing, that is, do you believe in the Son of God? If you haven't believed in Him yet, believe in Him now, that is, believing and is accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. Friend, do not be delayed until the judgment day. It's too late. Now, I hope that you pray to God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Now, I open my heart and receive your Son into my heart. Since the Son of God has already died for you and was judged in your place, so I hope you just believe in Him with your sincere heart and confess with your mouth. Finally, I will read for you Romans chapter 10 from verse 9 to 10. If you confess with your mouth Jesus as the Lord and believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. If you believe in Jesus as your Savior right now, and you can immediately be saved. Amen. Thank you.